So hi guys welcome back to the channel first of all if I look spaced out in the video it's because I have been under sleeping for the past three days because it was E3 season and I have to catch all the E3 action and uh, it, in India it is apparently late at night early morning so I've been catching that and that's why I look uh, if I look spaced out it's that the reason and next thing I want to tell is this is going to be a long video because there is going to be a lot of information and so yeah be warned. And the next thing I want to give is two disclaimers. The first disclaimer is whatever I'm telling is the information is available to public and considered to be the truth as of 16th of June 2021. And the second disclaimer that I want to give is half knowledge is dangerous and it can lead to misunderstanding and misinterpretation of the situation of uh, or any topic that you're learning. So, you know, the information I've collected, you know, many parts are omitted and what, uh, how I present, how I want it to be or how I think it is best to put and it doesn't paint a bigger picture for everyone so if you guys want to get a bigger picture and widen your horizon on coronavirus uh, the links will be down in the description from wherever I have uh, you know collected the information you can read through it after you have watched this video and the next is credits uh, goes out to the researchers and doctors because they put their painstaking time as well as their health their life on the line to establish truths and provide new researchers and does researchers on the coronavirus so credit goes out to them the first thing that I want to tell is what is the official name of the virus so the official name of the virus is SARS-CoV-2 which stands for severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 that's the full name of the virus that we are facing right now or the COVID-19 virus it also goes as other names such as NCOV-19 which is novel coronavirus 19 and also COVID-19 which is coronavirus disease 19 and 19 denotes the year which the pandemic kicked off which was 2019 next I want to tell you what coronaviruses are so coronaviruses are a group of RNA viruses that causes respiratory tract infection in mammals and birds symptoms range from mild to lethal mild cases are common cold and lethal ones are SARS-1 and MERS so coronavirus is already a virus which are a group of viruses which already existed in nature and uh, when a person gets coronavirus it uh, or a person or animal gets coronavirus it uh, mainly infects their respiratory tract and uh, mild cases are common cold and the lethal ones are SARS-1 and MERS outbreak which were the two major coronavirus outbreak which happened uh, in the last uh, century in the world. Uh, SARS-1 stands for corona, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 1 outbreak which happened in China itself in 2002 and the MERS outbreak which is the Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome uh, coronavirus outbreak which happened in 2012 in the Middle East. Now with that said, let's get into how uh, this virus started uh, spreading and how it became the pandemic we all know today. The accurate date is still debated on because the Chinese authorities tell that the first case was on 1st December 2019 but the researchers, many other researchers argue that if the pandemic had to be or become of this level, it had to be started before that maybe from somewhere uh, September. So the date is still debated and we don't know it. So let's see how the international community knows it as of now. News broke out on January 5th, 2020 when WHO published a disease outbreak news titled Pneumonia of Unknown Cause China. So in that they tell on 31st of December 2019, WHO's Chinese, uh, China country office was uh, informed of pneumonia of unknown ethology. So ethology means cause which is a scientific word. So unknown ethology means unknown cause detected in the Wuhan city Hubei province of China. And as of 3rd Jan 2020, 44 patients have been reported, 11 are severely ill and 33 patients are in a stable condition. The casual agents have not been identified. Uh, authorities report that some patients were operating dealers and vendors in the Hunan seafood and live animal market. No significant human to human transmission have been found by the authorities. So this was how they started the article and later they go into the risk assessment. So let's see what the risk assessment WHO gives for this. They tell that there is limited uh, information to determine anything concrete you know symptoms are similar to common respiratory diseases uh, but uh, 44 cases of pneumonia leading to hospitalization clustered in a space and time should be handled prudently and they also tell that the reported link uh, by authorities to the wholesale fish and live animal market could indicate an exposure link to animals so uh, this is what WHO's disease outbreak news which they published in the website told so after this we all kind of know what transpired the cases started rising in China you know the authorities who first uh, denied any significant uh, human to human transmission as to put it in quotes uh, came out and told that there is a proof of significant human to human transmission and everyone were required to mask up 
to contain the spread of the virus but by the time it was already too late cases started spiraling out of control and also cases started popping up in other major cities in china and to contain the spread of the virus china had to undergo lockdown so during the lockdown not only the chinese people but also people from other countries were also stuck in china so they wanted to return home and uh, you know they started evacuating these people to their own country so once they reached their countries you know they started exhibiting symptoms and later when they were admitted to the hospital they were confirmed to be uh, carrying this new coronavirus or the pneumonia like virus which is later named as covid-19 or coronavirus and after that we all know what happened around the world in every country coronavirus started uh, you know appearing and you know the cases started topping uh, the previous days cases uh, rapidly and it was spiraling out of control and by march and the entire world about its knees to coronavirus medical fraternity couldn't do anything and the world was under lockdown and it came to a standstill so now we know how the coronavirus started and where we are right now let's see from where this virus came from or the origin of the virus so the origin of the virus is still not known and uh, you know scientists and it's uh, believed that there are only two plausible theories as to where this virus originated from so the first one is natural emergence so as the name suggests natural emergence uh, you know it came from the nature nature made it as all other disease causing pathogens and the earlier days of covid-19 was very similar to the sars1 virus outbreak in 2002 in china so i'll give you a small brief of uh, the sars1 outbreak in china so the sars1 outbreak was caused by the sars corona virus which is a zoonotic origin so zoonotic means animal animal origin and the cases started spreading or the first case was uh, registered on the 16th of november 2002 in china in a province called guangdong and later the first case was traced back to a place called fuhan of fushan I, I know that i butchered that name i apologize the first people infected by this virus were people in the food industry to be specific chefs bakers butchers vendors and people of that sort and uh, coming back to the present situation in covid-19 who were the people who were first infected there were people who worked as dealers and vendors in the hunan seafood market so many experts were uh, kind of drawing parallel between the two and also the sars1 virus i told uh, it was of zoonotic origin and it spread through an effect uh, to humans called natural spillover so what happens in this is a virus uh, infects a species of animal so when after it infects that species of animal completely it jumps from that species to another species and from that to another so that's how humans contracted the virus so first this corona virus infected bats then from bats it jumps to palm civets from palm civets it jumps to humans and palm civets were animals which were uh, you know purchased and traded in the live animal markets in china so that's how humans uh, was exposed to animals and a uh, exposure link and that's how humans contracted the coronavirus so this parallel was drawn and uh, they concluded that it could be of uh, natural emergence or nature gave the virus and it somehow infected humans and also the genetical analysis showed that it was 96% identical at a whole genome level to another bat coronavirus which was already existing in nature which was called bat cov rat g13 now with that let's go to the second theory so the second theory to be specific is a man made theory or to be more specific it's a lab leak theory and it was not relevant until very recently so if you have been following news you'll know what i mean you know many doctors researchers were uh, you know hesitant to speak about this and the only people speaking were people from the conspiracy theory community and from past one month if you have been following the news you'll know that they have been writing all the scientists and researchers have been writing not only their governments but also to who to investigate a possible lab leak angle and i think the catalyst for this was a article published by nicholas wade in the bulletin which was titled origin of covid did people or nature open pandora's box at wuhan so from the title itself you can kind of guess what he's getting at so i'm not going to go into great detail on whatever uh, he goes over in his article because that could be its own stand alone 30 minutes video i'm going to tell only some things a, a small uh, paragraph of history or why he thinks or why he speculates that it could be a lab leak So he starts by telling that he doesn't uh, refute natural emergence but you know even after 15 months or uh, even after a year and a half of research in natural emergence no evidence turning up uh, suggests that we also have to diversify our uh, search for the origin of the virus so he t- uh, he tells this because wuhan is the home to wuhan institute of virology which is a leading coronavirus research center in the world wuhan is a place where the 
uh, you know, outbreak occurred and he tells that the coronavirus uh, research here or uh, to be specific back coronavirus research here was done by one Miss Shi Zheng Li and her work and experiences are gone through in detail in the article that he writes. Article is linked down uh, in the description. You can go through that later after watching this video. So you'll get more knowledge about that. And earlier she had uh, teamed up with another eminent coronavirus researcher uh, from the University of North Carolina. His name was Ralph S. Barrick and uh, their work, the collaboration mainly focused on creating a bad coronavirus which could directly infect humans because bad coronaviruses couldn't directly infect humans. So they wanted to genetically modify this virus uh, to be able to infect humans. And in 2015, they were actually successful in creating such a virus and it was named SHC014 coronavirus, which was made with the backbone of the SARS-1 virus and spike protein of another bat virus. And this virus was uh, successfully able to infect the human airway cells which were made in lab. And seeing this virus and this, uh, you know, created virus, one virologist, his name is Simon Wayne Hobson, from, he was a virologist in the Pasteur Institute, which is in Paris. He told that if this virus escapes, no one could predict its trajectory. His statement kind of shows how dangerous this virus was. So now you might have a question of why these scientists and researchers are creating dangerous viruses. Isn't this illegal? Why don't the government stop them? So I want to tell you guys that in science, you know, scientific community, this is a legit form of research, which is called as gain of function. So basically in this uh, research, the good outweighs the risk. And to tell it in more simpler words, they create a virus or they genetically modify a virus uh, to be more dangerous than one which is already there in nature in a safe environment such as a lab. So after that, they can experiment on the virus and they can, uh, you know, create a virus and study about it. So if it does occur in nature, they already know what to do. So now you might have a question that if they are genetically modifying and making it more dangerous, how does it naturally occur in the nature? So nature does business or uh, nature's way forward is through evolution and to be specific, it's through selection and variation. So to put it in simpler terms, uh, you know, I would love to tell a old saying which goes, the victor is not the one who wins the battle, but the war. To tell that, you know, one species or organism or virus uh, they have many variations so they all duke it out and you know the strongest virus or uh, strongest uh, mutation out of that comes on top and that is nature's way or uh, you know the law of jungle as uh, people like to call it and Nicholas Wade speculates that it could be due to or the leak could be due to uh, this gain of function research done in a low security lab in Wuhan Institute of Virology so he goes into what are the security levels and everything in his article you can read through that and uh, he tells that uh, this gain of function research done by Miss Shi Zheng Li was actually in a very low level uh, you know lab and uh, you know the proof to this is actually all her publishing which she did or her work so he tells that before 2020 the SARS-1 outbreak and the MERS virus were the only experiments which were required a security level of BSL-3 level security labs and other coronaviruses could be uh, you know the experiments on that could be conducted in a BSL-2 level security lab And recently also Ms. Xi Jing Li came out and told that these theories were wrong and you know uh, you, people are uh, falsely accusing her and uh, I read this on money control. With that ends the first part of the video. So if you like the video leave a like and your like motivates me. It is like telling. And also share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel and also enable the bell notification so you'll be notified next time I post a video. And also I'm telling this is only half of the video. The second part is coming after an hour or two of publishing this video. So the link to that I will provide in the pin comment in the comments and also in the i button and also it will be in the description after I post that video I'll update this. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.